Alright, before I start reviewing the Technics that I just wanted to show a quick comparison of the two here. The new one and the Technic. 1995-2021. Pretty wild. Anyway, let's get on to the review for set 8480, the 1995 Technic Space Shuttle. Got a lot to say about this one, so this one should be fun. Let's go. Alright. So since I already have the uh, satellite out, I'm just going to leave it out and show you how to put it back, basically, and it's just the opposite for taking it out. To start things off, the instructions. So I don't have the physical instructions for this at all, um, and I just used the digital to build this, and I will say, in terms of digital instructions, these are pretty good. And in terms of being from 1995, actually also, the digital instructions are re really good and actually pretty good looking. So, <laughs> and a good example of not good looking ones would be the Avatar sets. Oh boy, those instructions suck. In terms of old digital instructions, I actually have to give this a solid 3 out of 5. And I might even give it a 4 because they actually have like that, um page in the front of the, the first or second page of the instructions has that little uh, diagram of the different lengths of the um, Technic pins and stuff. Very helpful diagram actually. I didn't didn't know those existed and uh, helped a lot in making this, just that little diagram. So yeah, gotta give the credit where it's due. Um, overall though, it was difficult to make, but if you part out each like instruction thing first, so if you like get each part, like you might have seen in my speed build, which you can watch here, I'll, I'll link that actually. Um, yeah, if you part out each instruction before you build it, it helps a lot. Holy crap! Uh, it would be—it's basically impossible to make without doing that because I tried it once and it didn't work. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the first time I make, made this, um, I didn't part out each instruction as I was making it, and I built it completely wrong. Uh, I won't lie, and it didn't, basically none of the features worked as they were supposed to. Um, the satellite didn't work, the bay doors didn't work, this, the flaps, like, weren't even and stuff. Yeah, it was just bad overall, the way I built it the first time. And the second time, I learned from my mistake, and I parted out each instruction before I put the pieces on, or I got each part of the, like, each piece from the instruction, and then put it on. So I knew if I was missing a piece or whatever, and that is definitely necessary to do for a set this old and for instructions like they have. So I can't give the instructions a 5 out of 5 just because you have to do that, basically. Um, but it is a kind of cool challenge, so 3 out of 5 for instructions. Let me know if you guys think that's too high or too low. <laughs> but for me, that seems fair. Playability and functionality. Oh, this one is fun for that. Um, so, playability and functionality are both top-notch. Like, Technic sets in general, I would think uh, most Technic sets in general that have power functions are gonna get a pretty close to a 5 out of 5 on playability and functionality. Obviously you have this little um, thing here, or uh, trans transmission thing here for changing the, to the different various um, things that you can do. Unfortunately, my um, fiber optic thing in there is broken, the little piece that's supposed to make um, colors coming out. Does not work, um, unfortunately, but it does spin back there, so I did get it to technically do what it's supposed to. It just, um, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't fire, as it were. The engines don't fire. <laughs> But it's still technically where it's I could just get another one of those pieces eventually, but uh, not a priority right now. I think that's one of those features that's just kind of uh, not something I would play with anyway, so not too worried about it. But it is cool that it has it, so if it did work, would be cooler, but you know, mine doesn't. <laughs> Alright, so um, also I just want to point out really quick, I put uh, tiles right here to identify what the different uh, stuff goes to here. So. The red is fire, you know, ignition, and then uh, white would be the bay doors because they're white. I thought that would make sense, and then I did, because I don't have the stickers, um, and then I did gray to do the uh, 
the arm, so that makes the arm go up and down, and then black is this uh, black piece in here that makes it spin. So that made it easier for me to kind of remember what does what and not have to go and, like, you know, test it out every single time. So, um, yeah, without having the stickers, I did make that little modification, and technically also I put that piece on there. But, uh, yeah, other than that, 100% what it's supposed to be, just so you know. Um, but thought I'd point that out before I go through every feature here. Um, Cause yeah, that's how I'm identifying what I'm supposed to be doing here. So, if we go ahead and uh, also just quickly point out the one, the knob on the right side is the one that makes uh, the actual stuff do stuff from this transmission box, and then the one on the other side is the one that closes the uh, the little. Eventually, it will. <laughs> it's slow going, but yeah, it closes the little. Uh, satellite thing there. So yeah, uh, I'll go ahead and fast forward through me getting this back into its folded up position here. So, and technically I just also, before I do that, you can do multiple things at once. So uh, you can be rotating it and closing the bay or the satellite things. As Boom, fold it up. So, yeah, and that's actually not even the, whole, the all the features. You still also get to do these little levers on the sides here, which this uh, the right side one does the flaps in the back there, and then the left side will drop the landing gear. And unlike the other one, you can pick it back up and plop the landing gear back in real easy too. <laughs> All three of them at once. So yeah, I'll give actually props for that because you can plop them all back in at once. Um, I know technically that's not correct, but it is easier. <laughs> also, you can do that with this one. I'll just, just quickly point that out. Um, so yeah. Anyway, playability and functionality. Just all the after seeing all those things, I don't know how I couldn't give this a five out of five. Like this is just so fun and. After having actually built it and having everything work, it is very satisfying to get it all together and see it actually work properly. Oh, beautiful experience. So, playability, functionality, 5 out of 5. Moving on, this one's a tough one. Cost and value. So, I paid around $300 for this. Um, I think it was closer to like 280 or something that I paid in US dollars. And that was only a few months ago, so that's 2020 rates. Um, which actually isn't bad. The only piece that doesn't work, obviously, is that uh, back piece, the fiber optic um, piece doesn't light up as it should, but it did technically work when I got it. It just stopped working after like a few seconds, so Yeah, this this one is hard to justify if you buy it new, for sure, because this goes for like well over like $500 new. But if you part this out and you're willing to pay for some of the more expensive pieces, like the one in the uh, satellite here or the uh, some of the ones down in here that for this gearbox, um, if you're if you're willing to pay the more for some of the more pricey pieces, the rest of these are pieces you could very easily get even just off of like lego.com so I would say it's worth parting out definitely not worth buying new um, but yeah if you actually wanted to I think this would be worth it I think the value of this if you were to part it out not if you were to get it new is definitely worth at least three hundred dollars so if you if you can get it under three hundred dollars you have a solid value, definitely for this set, um, especially if everything is working properly, so <laughs> including even the back fiber optic part. Um, but yeah, I I think the cost and value is actually going to be a four out of five on this um, if you part it out. So with all uh, retired sets, I do have the stipulation on there. Um, but uh, yeah, this one, if you part it out, cost and value four out of five. Difficulty and challenge. So, as I uh, said before, I did build this twice. I had to build this twice. Um, I didn't build it right the first time, and most of the features, pretty much 99% of the features didn't work. I think 
One of the things that did work was the spinning of the arm, just the spinning, not not the up and down. So the satellite arm would, would be able to spin back and forth and that was it. But of course the bay doors didn't open so it didn't matter <laughs> the first time. But now, the second time I built it, which means I had to take it apart, I had to disassemble this uh, fully and then reassemble it and that is also in the video that I linked. Um, Having to have do that, it's still 4 out of 5 for me. It is a very difficult build, but, big but, because it is so rewarding, after everything is together and actually working, when you actually see it all work and you get to, you know, make everything function, it's a 4 out of 5. Like, it is the most difficult thing I have ever made but in Lego by a long shot. Um, this is definitely the most difficult thing I've ever had to build for Lego anyway. Um, and yeah, it's definitely worth it. Yeah. Worthy challenge, I guess, would be the way to say it. <laughs> Building experience. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> so yeah, going into building experience, uh, basically just goes back from what I was saying in difficulty and challenge. Just because it was the most difficult thing I've ever made definitely doesn't mean it's gonna get a bad rating. Yes, it was difficult, but like I said before, was very fun and rewarding after finally getting it together and seeing everything work properly. So yeah, building experience also four out of five. So this one's an interesting one, <laughs> representativeness. Um, so, I know a lot of people don't like that it has a bunch of holes in it, and that's just kind of, you know, that's how Technic sets are, I, I would argue, um, for the most part, especially the older ones. You just, you know, getting to see all those mechanisms. So, it does represent the space shuttle. Like, you can look at this and you're like, well, yeah, that's the space shuttle, but, like, you also look at this and you're like, Huh, it doesn't look complete, <laughs> you know? Like, there's just, just the bay doors, really, I think are what make it not look complete. Because back here, it looks solid. Like, you have this, like, solid white part, and, like, even just the, the tail looks pretty good. But then you get to, like, the bay doors, which are just, like, these super open things. And it just kind of looks weird to me. But it's still very representative of this shuttle in general because I mean you know it's got all the features got the satellite in it and the satellite even does the like you know, spreading of the satellite wings so in terms of full representation just because of the holes I can't give it a 5 out of 5 like I know it's a Technic set and I know Technic sets are supposed to have the holes and stuff but you know it's a look I'll admit, and I like it, I personally like how this looks, I love how this looks, but some people don't, and that's alright, um, but I think just because it has so much gaps and stuff in this, just the bay, really, is what kind of sets me off, um, from it being totally representative, so, 4 out of 5 for representativeness, just because the bay is so open compared to, really, the rest of the set, um, it just feels too open. But yeah, that would be the only thing that makes it a 4 out of 5, actually, honestly, for me. Because um, it does definitely represent the actual shuttle. Um, I don't actually know what shuttle specifically, which shuttle mission they're trying to represent, but um, I assume it's also Discovery because it has the satellite in it. But with that said, there were plenty of other missions that deployed satellites, so... It might not have been <laughs> extra and bonus features. So for this one, there aren't really that many extra features. So I would count technically having a place to put minifigures at all in this set as an extra feature. Oh, I think I actually uh, also added those um, control panels in there. Um, anyway, having a seat for minifigures is really cool. Um, and like a full minifigure could fit, two full minifigures can fit in there. You could probably fit three if you wanted to jam one in the middle seat there if you, <laughs> above the uh, the motor box. But yeah, 
it does have that as sort of an extra bonus feature. I wouldn't really technically count that too much as one, but uh, for the sake of this build, considering it doesn't have that many like extra features, because all of the features that they put in here, they prominently display to you. They're like, yes, this is this is something that this does. So. Yeah, the extra feature for me is really just the seats in there, I guess, um, and being able to put minifigures if you want, and um, it's still got a whole lot of features, so the fact that it has so many makes some of them feel like bonus features, so. Four out of five on the extra slash bonus features. To sort of wrap things up here with the uh, displayability and looks, um, one of the things that I have already pointed out a few times or shown you a few times, you can display this one vertically. Um, the new set, the new uh, 2021 Shuttle Discovery, you cannot do this with. It will just fall forward. Um, this one, good stuff. Stays where it should. Um, and it's definitely meant to do this because they put these little uh, black um, feet at the bottom here that are even with the, uh, the tail fin or whatever. So, definitely meant to actually be able to display it like this, and I think that is super cool, especially for a set this big, um, considering it is basically the exact same dimensions as the uh, the newer one. Um, very nice to be able to put this up against a wall and kind of push it out of the way a little bit more than some of the other, other shuttles that I have. <laughs> so yeah, displayability and looks, just because it's such a big set and you can display it vertically and I feel like nobody talks about how you can display this vertically just because of that I'm giving it a 5 out of 5. My personal I love that you can display it vertically and that's that's the whole reason I'm giving it a 5 out of 5. <laughs> For personal opinions on this set I loved making this set and as I've said before it was so rewarding seeing everything come together and work as it actually should especially since I built it wrong the first time uh, seeing it actually work right the second time was beautiful. And I definitely love actually being able to take this out and like play with it. I uh, am going to be taking the batteries out of it pretty soon because you're not supposed to leave them in there for a super long time, but uh, it's hard to justify it, you know, quite yet. I liked building this. Um, it was super fun, super challenging, but super fun. And yeah, I think if you guys have a chance to part it out, definitely worth getting. If you have a chance to get it new for some reason at a pretty decent price, like around $300 new, go for it, 100%. Do not pass that up. Um, yeah, cool set, definitely a cool set. And this does almost inspire me to get more Technic sets that are older and have this much functionality in them and stuff, because I, I enjoyed that, so yeah. Look forward to more space shuttle reviews in the future and if you guys want to check out some more there are links in the description um and uh yeah if you guys have any other p opinions that uh, i might not have talked about and you want to let me know about them for this set do comment below and uh yeah thank you all for watching i am sure you know how the buttons work down there by now otherwise click them as you please and uh yeah mr iota panda Oh.